Okay, everybody. Well, good evening and hello. You are Clutch from the South Dakota Mo Sodak Motorcycle Blog here with another edition of my favorite rides. As you can see, Iron Mountain Road is the way we're going today. Now, technically, Iron Mountain Road goes all the way down into Custer State Park. I'm not going to show you that. I'm going to show you basically from the sign on because that's probably the coolest part of that road is this right here, honestly, from here on. But but there are a couple good places to camp down here. Uh, Spokane Creek's got a campground. There's a horse camp down the road as well. So let's go take a run up Iron Mountain Road. Now, before... You all know this before I have done this. This would have been way back in season the first. I think it was the first season I did of my favorite rides on on these roads, and it just you know wasn't a good one. Done with my phone, done very poorly. So I've decided now that I have a GoPro, a drone. I got a little better technology, maybe a little better eye for how to make this thing work good. We're going to do it again. And that's what this whole season's been. You saw in episode one with Spearfish Canyon, same deal. It's, it, this is basically going to just be a reboot season. Just getting a little better job at it. Doing some of those roads that I covered in the first season, doing them a little bit better justice. Now, in reality... The only way to do any of this justice is to come here and experience it yourself because you just won't you won't get the feeling of running down these roads unless you're actually experiencing them for yourself. So you really got to be here, man. But other than that, sit back, enjoy the ride. I'm going to get a di the drone out here too, get you some drone shots. Now, for those of you wondering, I am not filming on any wilderness or Mount Rushmore National Park or any of that. I mean, we're going to be close by, but I'm following the rules of the Black Elk Hill Wilderness and Mount Rushmore National Memorial, so don't all freak out about it, okay? Some of the things you're going to see on this road as well, quite a few curves, two pigtails, which are a little funky little bridge if you've never seen them before. Also, well, they say four presidents, and that's because, well, we got this little thing in our state called Mount Rushmore, and well, there it is. Right behind that tree. But trust me, it's there. Iron Mountain Road started its life as an idea by South Dakota Senator Peter Norbeck and C.C. Gideon as an access road to the new Mount Rushmore project. These two had previously laid out the Needles Highway in 1922. When planning the road layout, Norbeck and Gideon sought to create a scenic drive to the monument and not merely follow the easiest route. Norbeck's plan was always to make people slow down and enjoy the drive in the scenic beauty of the Black Hills. Iron Mountain Road runs for 17 miles from just east of Custer State Park East Entrance Station to the junction of South Dakota Highway 244 just west of Keystone. It has 314 curves, 14 switchbacks, 3 pigtails, 3 tunnels, 2 splits, and of course, four presidents. For this video, we started at the Iron Mountain Road headquarters at the Spokane Creek Campground. Just a few miles north of the headquarters, you encounter a small plateau which opens up to a great view of Mount Rushmore and also Black Elk Peak. Also, you get a preview of the Ponderosa Pine Forest you are about to travel through.
So, a few things on the road. It is not a road to uh, go all Rossi on. It was designed to be a road you take slowly. Like it was done that way by design. So you could sit and actually so you could enjoy the scenery where you're driving through. So with that in mind, don't be coming up here expecting to set lap records. Unless maybe it's 5 in the morning before everybody's gotten up, but it's a low speed limit road. I think it's posted at 25 miles per hour. Well, 35 in the 35 in the before stretch, but then once you get into the big stretch of it, it's 25. So, not to mention if you're here during the summer, you're going to deal with tourist traffic, and they allow all the tourist traffic, including the big RVs. So, that's just something to be mindful of. As far as this time of year, so we're here, this is the last Monday of August. This is the last Monday before Labor Day. So it's not as busy this time of year. Obviously you got rally in the front half of the month. This half of the month you don't see a ton of families anyway because for the most part, all the kids are back in school already. But what you do see here is a lot of older couples, some retired couples. Um, so that's one thing. You don't have the crazy families all over the place. But you still got to, there's still a ton of people around. This is still quite the draw. So you got to be mindful of that. This road, you don't have to pay to get into this road. Even if you end up going through that park part, as long as you go... On stay on this highway, which is 16A through Custer State Park, as long as you don't get off 16A, you don't stop or anything, you can drive through Custer State Park. Because this highway, if you go back, you turn around the way I came, and you go south for about oh five or six miles, you get down to um, right by the west entrance or the east entrance station of Car Custer State Park, and from there you can just take that road, just follow it straight into Custer. Like I said, as long as you don't stop or anything, you don't actually have to pay to get into the park. Meaning that this stretch of road is free. Unlike Needles Highway, you don't have to pay for a park pass to get on it. So hey, that's a good thing. So All the way in the end, for the most part, it's a road in the hills, so they're always good. Although I'd say this road is probably our closest thing we have to I'd say like Trail of the Dragon level kind of road. And I've never been on it, so I have no frame of reference. Although I've heard numerous motor vloggers say this thing's so much better than Tail of the Dragon. Now, I'm going to discount that with Prisoner of the Moment. <laughs> the things we don't have to deal with this road are, well, the speed limit's lower, which is kind of nice. You, can, you don't have to go crazy down this road and feel like you're going to get run over. Because I don't know, I've never been on, on Tail of the Dragon, but from what I've seen of it, it looks like the bigger hazard ain't so much the curves, it's the ding-dongs that are trying to see if they can run down the road like Valentino Rossi, which is a really stupid idea to do on a street, on, in a street, in the street environment. <laughs> like, that's for the track. So you don't see near as much of that around here. And frankly, like I said, you can Rossi it all day, but if you get stuck behind a big old RV, guess what? You're just not going to get anywhere, so is what it is. Alright, so this is one of the many tunnels that you'll find coming down this road. I'm going to sneak through because I'm going to be that guy. And of course you get a nice little shot of George Washington there. Those are kind of like you may have seen that picture that's got the uh, that's got the faces in the tunnel coming through. Well, you won't get it. You can get close to that view, but that's actually a made-up shot. That was actually done with uh, with the magic of photo editing. 
Way back when. Yeah, you won't see that close up of the, the face on it, but you'll still get kind of a cool view going through the tunnel of it, you know? So, and of course, coming up these curves, get the same deal. Of course, if you are riding on these roads, uh, beware. These curves are tight curves, and they can sneak up on you if you're not paying attention. Especially when you get to the apex and it really does that dive down, or feels like it does. I mean, they are posted 15. I think not pushing it, you could get around at 25, but. Although I did that one at about 15 and actually felt about right. But that kind of depends on who you are and what you want in the road. But just beware, you might find rocks or something or dirt or something in that road if you're coming around them corners fast. So, like I said, bottom line is just be careful on this road. Another thing you'll have, you might have issues with is, uh, especially you got first gen Goldwing, getting kind of that funky weird spot where it doesn't quite cool you down right. So keep an eye on your temp gauge, especially on a first gen Goldwing, because I'm in second gear right now, and sometimes 15 miles an hour ain't quite enough to force enough air into there. But if you stop at the scenic overlook, which we're going to. You can alleviate some of that and give your engine a chance to cool, which we're going to do. Get the drone out again. This here, this is the Norbeck Overlook. At the top of Iron Mountain, you will find the Norbeck Overlook with ample parking and hiking trails this overlook should not be skipped, especially with the great view of Mount Rushmore from the Norbeck Monument. This is just kind of a fun road to go down, you know? Especially the best time of year to take this road is like mid-September when you're past Labor Day. The days are still fairly nice. They're fairly warm, but it's not 
at least around here it's not overbearing generally but I'd say like middle September is probably about the perfect time to be up here honestly if you can get up here on a middle September Tuesday afternoon you have the road damn near to yourselves and also well you can get t-shirts and other fun stuff for this road that where I started there I started to issue video I should have mentioned that's at Spokane Creek campground and they're the ones that that uh, and I think there's actually a uh, organization too that like this you know to for push the interest of the road or something like that so and I think they're a big part of it but you can get like all your get Iron Mountain stickers t-shirts mugs hats all that stuff at Spokane Creek one downfall is that Spokane Creek is only open from Labor Day or Memorial Day to Labor Day so yeah <laughs> that's it so here's a cool spot we even have spots where you can see that the road splits just like so kind of wish the whole road was split up like that that'd make things a lot nicer you won't have to deal with that other lane but still this is a pretty cool little spot to run through here This road is just a very cool road in general. And honestly, I don't ride it as much as I should, but man, I tell you, the few times I ride this road, I generally have a really good time. And for those of you who have followed the blog over the years, pictures and stuff, I seems to always be a lot of pictures come from this area. But just there's so many cool things running through here. And at the end of it, you can run up to Mount Rushmore and say hello to the faces. No, your park pass will not, your national park pass will not get you in there because, well, it is a free park. You just have to pay to park. But if you are active duty, military, I think active duty retired, or no, I think if you are active duty military, I think that's all they allow it for is active duty military. If you're active duty military, you basically get your parking pass, you go up to a computer, you validate it, and basically you get it for free. So when you pull in there, yep, they're going to give you a, a ticket, but you go validate that before you leave and you won't have to pay a dime. So good little tidbit for those of you who are active duty military out there. Time for another cool tunnel. Now, one thing I want to introduce to you is tunnel rules. And what I mean by tunnel rules is, well, you see how we can't see that very well there? Oh, and our first pigtail. So you see how you can't see through that very well? Well, when you're coming up the spot that you can't see, you're supposed to sound your horn. So, another little tidbit to know. Oh, let's see here. You know what? Yeah, we're going to park illegally here. Yeah, we got to we gotta shoot the drone up over this, man. Hell yeah. <laughs> I know. We're going to cheat some more. One big goal was framing the new Mount Rushmore National Monument in strategically placed tunnels along the route. This brought about another problem, how to account for the need to drop the roadbed past the tunnel significantly without using concrete and steel construction. This is where the pigtail bridges were born. To construct the pigtail bridges, wood was used. This design, as you can see, makes these bridges blend in perfectly with the ponderosa pine forest environment surrounding it. According to C.C. Gideon's granddaughter, Gideon expected the bridges to last 20 years. However, they lasted from 1932 until 1989 before needing any significant repairs. This one's especially cool because you can't really see that other side as well. These are just fun to play around with. Now 
No, this has turned out to be a fairly decent summer day. And here's our next pigtail tunnel. After another tunnel, of course, with a nice little give you a shot of Mount Rushmore here after a horn honk. Look at that right there. There's your money shot, baby. You probably can't see it, but. And there's the big reveal right there. And yes, I understand that Rushmore is, you know, not not very good and it's it's not as big as it seems and blah 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 and all that horse crap. You know what? Here's here's what I'll present to that. I see the excitement and joy of about, I don't know. 150 or so officer candidates that come through our OCS program every year and They're pretty excited to see Mount Rushmore and they take a lot of pictures and yeah Maybe some of that's influenced by the fact they've been stuck at OCS for eight weeks, but I don't know some people still enjoy it. So I Guess if you're one of those that that absolutely hate it. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You hate it Don't know what to tell you, bud If I'm not mistaken, this is like the, yeah, you got like three of them here. Or no, two of them. So there's like three total ones. Well, let's stop and take a look at this one because we got the drone. Why not? Man, I am I'm very excited with these drones with this drone footage to see what it turns out to be I'm really excited about it The drones really gonna bring a lot of depth to some of these videos. That's for sure And I can't wait to share it with you Obviously right now I'm sharing it with you, but Like I said here in August I'm just almost giddy with the thought of this thing going out going live in January. That's gonna be awesome. Hopefully you like it. Hopefully you enjoy the drone footage. I tell you what, it's fun to fly them around, that's for sure. All right, let's look at some more, let's do some more road here. Shut up and ride, buddy. Yep, that's right. Let's shut up and show the people what they want. What do they want? They want awesome motorcycle roads. This is my last one right down here. Sweet. Oh yeah. The pullouts right down below, perfect. And yes, your third and final pigtail bridge. Now, if I remember to, I'll give you some kind of explanation behind them, if I can. I'll do some research on them that I can dub over that drone footage. I'm going to try to anyway. Now, if there wasn't anything grubbed over that drone footage, well, I'm sorry. I guess I, I, guess I uh, didn't do it.
Alrighty, well, let's finish this one out. <sighs> and if you want any more drone shots in the studio, it's probably done, because now we are coming on Mount Rushmore National Memorial. And like all national parks and national memorials, Drone flying is strictly verboten. As in forbidden. As in no. Strictly forbidden. As in no. As in don't try it, ding dong. Yep. <laughs> Noted. I wonder how much that campground costs. I should come tell you to stay at it with some time. Yep, now we're getting on our last little bits here. Any moment now, we're actually going to be entering the monument. And actually, you go a decent amount actually in the monument on this road at the end of it. And yes, we are close. We're close enough that my drone is yelling at me, has yelled at me the last few times I've taken off with it because of my proximity to it, so. DJI drones are pretty good at telling you, hey, ding dong, you can't go there. Which tells me if, if they catch someone flying a drone in there and they're flying a DJI, yeah, that's gross negligence, I think. Because <laughs> like I said, this thing yells at you nonstop to do it. And that, my friends, was Iron Mountain Road. There you have it, everybody. Once again, thanks for stopping by the Sodak Motorcycle Blog. Once again, I am Clutch, your host at Sodak Motorcycle Blog. Oh, before I go on, I'd like to thank you for joining me today for this episode of My Favorite Rides on Iron Mountain Road. Uh... Once again, this is part of a series called My Favorite Rides, and we've been doing them for quite a long time, so I'll put a link to the playlist here at the end of this video. But anyways, I'd like to thank you for stopping by on this trip with the Sodak Motorcycle Blog. We release new videos every Thursday at 7 p.m. Mountain Time here in North America, and our videos are about motorcycles, motorcycle content from the Black Hills angle. Obviously, we cover Sturgis, Honda Goldwings, because I ride a Honda Goldwing, and also I take you on some cool roads around the hills, kind of like this one so if you like the video hit the like button if you dislike the video hit the dislike button please leave a comment it obviously is good to have comments and have some good discord on here but know this if you do leave a comment be advised that it may be featured on our monthly comments and beer show so especially if you write something really stupid guess what i'm probably going to make you famous on that show so think about that when you post your dumb stuff okay but anyways once again for clutch and the Sodak Motorcycle Blog. I am Clutch, and I know that sounded weird. I just said it twice. So, once again, for the Sodak Motorcycle Blog, I am Clutch. You take care of yourselves, and we'll see you. We'll see you later. <laughs>